Hello, this is Demil, and today I will go over importing brushes from Photoshop to Clip Studio Paint, and then after that I will tweak them, and then I will make a little painting. These are the brushes that I picked because I think they're pretty useful, and I think they could be pretty good start for anyone who is just a beginner, because uh, when I was starting out I had way too many brushes, and I was just confused like which one to use and how. I will try to go over it today and see if these brushes need any tweaking and see how to use them. Once you have the brushes that you want, you could put them in a group, select the group, click export selected brushes and then you will have the file that you could import to Clip Studio Paint. So this is how you could import your brushes. You just select and you could just drag them into the brush folder it's not going to work anywhere else, so make sure Subtool Brush is open. So once you have them imported, you're going to have some problems if you're importing a complicated brush. If you click the brush, it will show you in Tool Property what settings are actually active, which means they were added or changed from the previous person who created the brush. So most likely, from over here you could find the problem within the brush. If you want to see more settings you go into window subtool detail. That is going to open the subtool detail which is going to show you all the settings that are possible for the brush. All right so let's go over some of the brushes that are imported and see if they work fine. So the first three are pretty easy hard round square and angle thin. Hard round is pretty much self-explanatory. I didn't add anything to it. I just created a hard round because I think it doesn't come this simple from uh, Clip Studio Paint. I might have deleted the default ones on accident, but there's another one that is a square, which is the same exact thing, but it's a square shape. Uh, the third one is actually square, but it's angled and it's uh, squished. As you can see, now the thickness and the angle showed up. So the first two, it did not have any of that. Now I missed with the squish part and the angle, which means now it's going to show up in the tool property. The angle is a little bit weird in Clip Studio Paint for me. So right here you could see that it has the bar or you could switch to the number and it's not as intuitive as it is in Photoshop. And as you can see in Photoshop, you can actually see the angle that you're doing without actual numerical system and it's a lot easier to see the squishiness of your brush and for me it's a little bit easier to set it up in Photoshop first and then port it to Clip Studio Paint. So far so good. The angle and the thickness will be over here but I don't need to mess with it because the brush works just fine. Slight texture round is actually the most one that was affected by the entire import. In Photoshop, Slight Texture Round for me is the main brush that I would paint with. I like it because it lets me blend colors pretty easily because it's very uh, slight and it has a lot of texture to it. The way I would use it is just basically pick a color or go over some area, pick this one and now I can actually add that in between color between the area and get smooth smooth graduation between the two and this will help me add more to the painting and add more graduation without too much you know, effort. Let's see how it looks in Clip Studio Paint. If I use the slight texture around, this is how it's going to look like. It's a little bit different from what I have set up in Photoshop, so let's see in the settings what could be wrong. I think one of the things that is drastically different is the watercolor edge. Let's see, I turned off the watercolor edge and let's paint with it again. Now, I have way different effect even though I just turned off one setting. Another one is texture density. I added texture to it, but maybe it's just too strong. So let's go into 50%. Now this looks a lot closer to an actual brush that I have from Photoshop. Keep in mind that each setting could be used in different ways. So for brush size, I really love this part. In brush size, you could set up velocity, which means that the faster you draw, the thinner the brush stroke is going to get. 
and now you can get these cool effects with it. I removed watercolor edge, reduced the texture by 50, I increased the opacity by 50, and now I would say this is very close to the brush that I have in Photoshop. If you have any problems with your brush, just look at the tool property and try to figure out maybe there are some settings that are just too strong, or maybe just turn it off and see what happens next. Color Dynamic Round is a very simple brush that I like to use to add variety to my painting. And it works really well with forms and shape. So let's just make a circle and see what we could do with it. So I created a very simple sphere with an airbrush and it looks okay, and but it looks a little bit bland because all the transitions are way too smooth. And so starting from here, these are the post-process effects that I use sometimes for my paintings. In short, you can choose the color and then depending on uh, the brush stroke that you make each time, it's going to change the color just so slightly. And it's going to try and keep the best at keeping a little bit randomness, but not too much of it. I like to use it for some uh, hue variation, so maybe something like this. I could go around the form and I could add some variation to it without actually destroying the fundamental that I just built for the sphere. So I finished it and it has a little bit hue variation to it and now I can just go and remove some of the opacity and from a up close, it doesn't really look that good, but from a bit distance, it looks pretty interesting. I think it really works well with different situations and different forms. Another one is pretty simple, it's just speckles and it adds a little bit texture to it. I would like to use it on overlay or some other color mode so that I can play around with the texture of it and add just a little bit of hue variation again. So this one is blending, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's a smudge brush and it helps me to blend colors between each other. And here's another setting that to keep in mind when you're using and transferring things. For particle density, it was not there for any other brush. If you want to keep playing around with it, it was at one. And uh, it was giving me the effect similar to Photoshop, but not what I wanted exactly. So I just cranked up the density of the particles and now it lets me add way more to it than it did before and I think it's pretty nice change. It works even a little bit better than in Photoshop, in my opinion. Play around with all the settings. The next one is Smudge Sharp. It's pretty similar to uh, Speckles, but you could actually control a little bit more as to where it's going to go. It takes the texture and the color around and it tries to implement the blending, but it's actually not for blending exactly. It's just for adding way more tiny little texture to the object. If you want to add more to it, uh, you could. And you can also play around with the blending mode. If you could say in soft light or cover overlay, you could see that it adds like this little variation hue to your painting. So the last smudge one is actually one of my favorite, but it was also transferred wrong from Photoshop. Let's take a look as to what uh, it didn't do properly. In the angle in Photoshop, it follows the direction that the brush stroke is going, but in this case, it creates uh, the same angle for everything, and that's why it makes these weird smudging effects that I don't really like. If here, you can go into the angle and you could put the angle for direction line. Now it will follow whatever path you're going, which makes it a lot more useful. You can also play around with color stretch, which is the main thing that you're uh, basically smudging. So the more the color stretches, the more smudging there is going to happen. So at 40%, it's not doing as much. But if you go all the way to 100, it's going to keep on going with that same red that I just grabbed from the very beginning. I like to keep it at 99 because it's blending in with everything else, but it's also the strongest that you can get without making it too ugly. Also in subtool settings, you can see that there's a little eye icon. That is what's basically going to affect what's happening in your tool property. And you can click on each one 
so that it shows or hides anytime you need it. So if you use brush size a lot, then maybe you should keep it here. My favorite one is probably going to be opacity because it lets me blend in colors really easily and really fast and have control over it. And other than that, that's pretty much it. Import the brushes and play around with it if there's something wrong with it. And all the settings are usually on the left side. And after this, I'll decide to paint a watermelon to just practice forms and colors. And I think it turned out pretty interesting looking. And uh, you will see how I use the brushes. That's all the brushes that I used that I imported. I didn't really use anything else. And uh, thank you for watching. And I hope you learned something. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section.